going on and welcome back. I'm the Game Beaver and today we're going to do something a little bit different. I've always wanted to sort of do a talk sort of thing, whether it's about uh, the latest news or whether it's about how little Baba Beaver became the beaver that you see here before you. But today uh, we have a discovery of a monster-sized marine crocodile that has recently just been published on National, National Geographic. Um, this crocodile was found in the Tunisian desert, a place where not many fossils have really been discovered and a place that has been left sort of untouched as goes the uh, discoveries of these sorts of things. But this crocodile has been named the Machimosaurus Rex. Quite interesting! They actually, it doesn't have a sock, it doesn't have a sucus. Most of these uh, uh, crocodilians that turn up usually give them a sucus, but obviously, no, they thought, nah, we're gonna give this a Machis Machibosaurus Rex. But of course, the burning question that's on all of your lips is whether or not this crocodile is the biggest crocodile to ever have been discovered. Well, first off, before we get into the nitty gritty, um, this crocodile has been dated to have existed. And this is probably the most interesting fact about it to exist in the transitional period between the Jurassic and the Cretaceous. If for those of you that don't know, um, these are periods in time that are separated, supposedly and debate hotly debated by some oh damn fan paleontologists. Mm, yeah. But it's debated whether or not a mass extinction happened during these times. But this crocodile has shown that maybe the mass extinction didn't happen just like that, but maybe a more slower transitional period. But this crocodile's head was discovered and its head alone is five foot long, which going off other estimates and other crocodiles that live today, we can put this thing to grow to almost 10 meters long. Now for a crocodile, that's pretty damn big, but is it the biggest crocodile to ever exist? Well, for those of you that know your stuff, you'll know that it's kind of unlikely that this is the biggest one that ever existed. In fact, that title, I'm pretty sure, goes to Sarcosuchus, which outgrew 10 meters. But these two were separated probably by millions and millions of years. You see, uh, I'm gonna call it, well, Machimosaurus Rex, the one that has just been discovered, has actually been known to be a ocean crocodile. Uh, those of you know, in the oceans at the time, were some pretty frightening stuff. But once this and its relatives went extinct, they didn't quite reclaim the oceans, and um, crocodiles like Sarcosuchus sort of stayed to uh, inland rivers and sort of kept away from that whole danger zone out there. Now, what always interests me about these sort of things is that they have only found a portion of the skeleton. And even here in the article it says scientists are awaiting the discovery of a more complete skeleton to figure out exactly how large Machimosaurus rex was. But assuming that the new species had similar proportions, as I stated earlier, as its close relatives, um, they estimate Machimosaurus rex to have about been 31 feet long, or this specimen, uh, to be 9.6 meters. Now they would have to do more testings to prove this. Um, there was a TED talk, uh, the name escapes me by a man who said that we have been naming dinosaurs all wrong and in fact been classing them as uh, separate species when in fact they were actually young, um, young, youngers, younger versions of them. Hence why uh, they actually cut open a triceratops skull and a portion of the torosaur skull and found that the torosaur skull was a lot thicker bone density than the triceratops, hinting towards the torosaur is actually an adult triceratops and the fact that dinosaurs actually age a lot like birds. How a baby emu will not have its crest until it gets to a certain age and the same pattern would um, extend to the triceratops or ceratopsians family. So maybe a lot of them are related. I don't know if Styracosaurus and Torosaur are related. And yes, I'm not classing this as a dinosaur. It is still a crocodile. Don't worry guys, don't go too crazy on me. They both are reptiles and they look pretty similar. But the biggest, of course, the biggest crocodile to ever exist, as I have said, is the Sarcosuchus, which lived about 110 million years ago and grew as long as 40 foot 12 meters. That's about 2 meters longer and weighed up to 8 metric tons. Mamacha, oh god, I forgot his name, there it is. Machimosaurus uh, weighed about 3 tons. So there is um, a big difference, double the size. Um, even its skull, uh, Machimosaurus, is a lot narrower 
uh, probably for taking down maybe uh, a little lighter carrion than the Sarkasukas would go for pretty damn big uh, sauropods or god knows what else it could sink its teeth into. But since the time of this and other giants such as uh, Deinonychus, sorry Deinonychus? Oh my god, Dinosuchus, many crocodile lineages have died out over the millions of years that have passed, but there is still possibly a relative that lives today, and that is right, that is the saltwater crocodile. And the largest known specimen of the saltwater crocodile uh, measured a whopping 7 meters long. And when you compare 3 meters uh, difference between the biggest cro saltwater crocodile that's ever been known or uh, caught on record, that is actually not too much of a difference. And really today, we have some pretty scary crocodiles alive. But back to Machimosaurus rex. The carnivore's teeth may hint at what it fed on was in the ancient ocean. It had stocky, relatively short and rounded teeth and a massive skull capable of a remarkable bite force. This cluster of features leads the uh, Fanti, who is the discoverer of this beautiful crocodile, to suggest that the croc was a generalist hunter that took a variety of prey, including large marine turtles. He also goes on to say, it would likely have been something of an ambush predator, hanging around in shallow water, hunting turtles and fishes, and maybe waiting for some land animals to come across too close to the shore before becoming dinner. Now this is of course what normal crocodile Monday crocodiles do, and seeing as Monday crocodiles and these prehistoric crocodiles have little to no change in their anatomy or looks, and probably behavior in millions of years, we can very clearly guess that this is how they fed. But as I referred to earlier, this crocodile was around the hotly debated rapid extermination. This is the extinction that may have wiped out a lot of life between the transitional period of the Jurassic and the Cretaceous. In our inter... It's a bleh, let me uh, just read what Fondue says. The end Jurassic event was a global in its effects, but was mostly likely a complex sequence of local biological crises that are still poorly documented, as of course we did not evolve for a long time, and sort of building a time machine has not happened as far as we're aware. One of the outstanding mysteries is why the marine crocodiles didn't reclaim their former glory. Even though the family of Amachimosaurus rexes survived for longer than that, they didn't appear to thrive as they had in the Jurassic, which leads to more mystery and why this one grew so big. But while Machimosaurus rex was certainly impressive in size, it may have just been a dead crocodile walking. And that's going to have to be the end of this Beaver News snippet. If you've enjoyed the video, leave a like. And of course, I hope I have been playing some crocodile fighting in the background. So until next time, I'm probably not going to be stepping inside any lake or water outside the shower or bathtub anytime soon. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.